what's going on you guys welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at how you can add a login with facebook button and the entire flow into your app so basically we open up the app here we've got our awesome looking continue with facebook login with facebook button we can tap it we get the standard prompt we can continue by hitting this and I've already logged into Facebook, so I see this, but you would see an email field and a password field. And we've set up this example application, so it's saying this app would like to log in, and we can tap this to continue. And you notice we're now logged into my Facebook account, so what I've gone ahead and done is I simply print out the name of the current logged in user. And of course, we can close the app and reopen. And you can see that the login is persistent, so we can make sure the user doesn't have to log in every time. So yeah, we're going to take a look at how to set this up from scratch. It's uh, pretty straightforward. We'll be working with the Facebook developer console, so uh, get ready to have Chrome and uh, Xcode open, or I guess any browser of your choice for that matter. So that said, make sure you smash that like button down below, as always, for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's get started by navigating to developer.facebook.com. Sign into your Facebook account. You're going to want to hit My Apps and Create New App. And once you hit that, you'll get this modal pop-up here. And we want to start by giving it an app name. So I'm going to call this example tutorial app. And throw in your email there if it's not already auto-populated. Let's continue. It'll give us a I'm not a robot checkbox. So hit that. Let's continue. And our app should be created on their dashboard once it decides to reload like that. And we have all these products we can integrate from Facebook and their SDKs into our app. So we want to focus on Facebook login. So let's click on setup, click on iOS, and now we can actually begin setting this up in our project. So before we continue over here on their setup guide, uh, head on over to Xcode and create a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application. And let's call this my example FB sign in app. Kind of a long app name, but that's okay. Let's save it to our desktop. And the first thing that Facebook's going to want us to do is bring in their SDK. So let's just open up terminal as we're going to use CocoaPods to bring it in. CD into the project and do a pod in it. And now we can do an open pod file. And now let's continue over here. So the first thing it asks us is uh, what method do we want to use to bring in their uh, SDK? So we've got these options here. So we're going to select SDK via CocoaPods. And you'll see a bunch of text here of what to do. We just did this piece. What we want to do is copy this, which is the pod, and head back to text edit. And let's paste that in here. So pod, the Facebook login kit, lowercase the P for pod, close text edit, and run pod install. Give that a few seconds. What you care about are these green success installation messages. So once this is installed, let's close up this Xcode window with, with a command W. And let's open up the workspace by typing open project name dot XC workspace. And let's uh, expand our project hierarchy over here. Let me expand the Xcode window as well. 
and let's copy your bundle ID because we're going to need it in just a second. Head on over to the guide again. Let's continue. The next step is going to want us to put in our bundle ID here. So you can always go and change this later, but this is a requirement for the SDK to allow your app to log in. So paste it in, hit this drop down it gives you, hit save, and let's continue. And we can leave this uh, as is, so single sign-on, we'll skip this for now, just to set up the basic login. The next thing it's going to want you to do is bring in these uh, keys into your info P list. So a lot of this guide actually just gives you copy and pasteable code, but we're going to go through all of it to make sure you thoroughly understand what you're doing. So let's start by hitting this copy for all of this jazz. Head to your P list, right click, open as source code, and at the very bottom here, right before these last two closing tags, let's come in here and paste in what we just copied. And you'll notice there's basically just identifiers in here and Facebook's, of course, automatically generated them for you and they identify your app in the Facebook uh, console that we just created. And similarly, we also need to copy this jazz. And this jazz is basically, let me paste it first. This allows your application to make calls uh, to the Facebook APIs and under the hood services that the SDK offers. So uh, you can notice Actually, I think I copied the wrong thing. Let's go back here one more time and click this copy again. We copied this one the first time. Let's come back in here and do a paste. Okay, that looks right. Basically, these are all the Facebook services and whatnot that we wanna allow our app, AKA give it permission to call out to, which is why you have all this LS application business. Uh, it allows your app to also deep link into the Facebook app if you've ever seen login flows where the Facebook app will open on the device itself. So now that that's done, we can continue. The next thing it wants us to do, as we can see here, is update our app delegate with a bunch of code they give us. So they make it super easy where we can just copy all this by hitting that. Head on over to your app delegate.swift file copy all of this and do a command V to paste. And essentially what they do in here is import the SDK and they also put in some functionality to these basic application delegate functions. And the main thing to take away here is that the login uses, the login uh, SDK uses your app delegate to make calls to Facebook. So once that is good to go, uh, we can continue. Next up, it wants us to copy all of this to our view controller. So let's copy that, go to our view controller where we're gonna have the login, and we can simply paste that in. And again, if you notice, the only difference is, uh, in this case, our view did load is empty. In this case, our view did load has a uh, Facebook login button. And we're also going to want to do two other things with this login button. We're gonna want to set its delegate, and we're gonna say the delegate is self. And I believe this is a login button delegate. This delegate allows us to get the results of the login. So hit that error, and you wanna hit fix, and it'll automatically stub out the two functions for you. So one of them is did log out, and the other one is did complete with the results. So let's move those to the bottom. And the other thing you wanna do is you wanna ask for certain permissions. So you can assign uh, permiss permissions in here. So things like email, uh, public profile. And let me actually just continue on the guide because I think they tell you how to do all that. So we just did this view controller piece. Let's continue. And let's see, this step is asking us to check the current login status. So we can copy the Swift code here. And essentially, it's going to give us a new view to load. But let's see what it gives us. So instead of using this function, let's just copy this if block. And this is how Facebook lets you check if a current user is signed in. 
So of course, if the user is signed in, we don't want to show that login button. So we can put an else statement here and put this login button inside of this. So basically what it's doing is it's checking if there is a current access token. And if you're familiar with any kind of login, whenever you log into anything, uh, basically we save an access token for the currently authenticated user. So that said, we can move on. Next up, we want to basically uh, get permissions, like I mentioned. So let's copy this, come back here, and we can simply paste this here. Let's get rid of all these comments, so we don't need any of that. And you can see on the login button, we're basically doing what I typed in earlier. So when the user sees a prompt, you'll get the appropriate permissions to use public profile and email. So let's continue over here. So let's hit this and see what's up next. And actually that's the end of the integration. So here they've given us some next steps of what additional work can be done. So now you might be asking, once the user has logged in, how do we actually get their uh, data out of the Facebook services and graph? And what you wanna do is basically use the access token that the SDK gives you back to make a graph request. So we can do that in login button uh, did complete over here, this function. So the first thing we wanna do is get an access token. So we'll say the token is, I believe it gives it to you in the results. It's gonna be results.token.toString. And then we can create a request. So let request equals FB. Uh, login kit, I believe this one, dot graph request. And we want to create this graph request with a path and parameters. I think we want this one. So let's see, the path is going to be me. The parameters uh, will be a dictionary of what we want. Let's fill that out in a second. And we also want uh, this to be a get request and I think there actually is another version of this initializer that takes in the token so let's see we want graph path and parameters and this one we want this one I believe so the path like I said is me which is a current logged in user let's fill this out in a second token will be the token we put up here so token the version will be nil, and the HTTP method will be get. And this piece is super important. So basically in here, we wanna say fields, and we basically wanna supply all the fields that we wanna get out of the uh, request. Something to keep in mind is you only have the ability to get the fields for which the user has granted permissions. So the permissions up here we set were public profile and email. So for the purposes of this fetch, let's just do email and name. Those are the two fields we want. And actually, I think we wanna do it as such. And I'll double check that in a second. And finally, we want to start this request by calling request.start. And the completion handler uh, takes a connection uh, or connect shun results and error and in here we can simply say print results and hopefully we should see our results and what i'm also going to do and we can ignore this warning because it's saying it might be optional which is fine for the purpose of purposes of this example let's also copy this entire thing and put it in this if block. So every time the app opens, if the user is signed in, we can essentially make this same call. Uh, the other thing you wanna do is for this token, you wanna say token dot to string. And yeah, I think that's about it in terms of what we need to do to get this set up. Let's see why this is complaining. This is complaining that we have passed in, uh, I see. So this needs to actually go with a comma 
in the first string like I was doing initially, like so, because this is a dictionary and not an array. All right, so that should be good to go. So let's zoom out here so you guys can see the whole thing. So there isn't too, too much code actually in here. In view did load, we're simply checking if the user is signed in. If they are, we make a request. If they're not, we show the login button. We have the login delegate functions for if the user uh, completes the login with a result uh, and if they log out. So let's uh, let's just hit Command R and see uh, see what we get. So select the simulator up here. Hit Command R to build and run. Cross your fingers that I didn't break anything, and hopefully we should get our login flow. So again, just ignore these warnings. There is our app, and we should see a login button here. Hopefully, like so, we get our login button. And what's super nice is you don't have to worry about bringing in images or anything for this. It's all handled by Facebook. If we tap it, we get the standard alert uh, saying that the app wants to log in with Facebook. Once it pops up, we see the name we added uh, on the Facebook console here. Once we add a app icon in the console, it'll show up here as well. So I'm going to uh, just hit this button. So I'm already signed into my Facebook account on this device. And I did that by just signing in with the previous app that I was working on. If you're not logged in, you'll see the email password fields. But before I hit continue, let's expand our console here because we're going to print out the result of the fetch. Let's hit this. And you'll see down here we get some data. And it's an optional, but we have my email address. And we also have... Uh, my full name as well as my user ID. So that's basically how you can use the Facebook login SDK to log in users into your app. Uh, and the other thing I'll demonstrate before we wrap up this video is if you hit command R to build and run, you'll see that we don't show the login button anymore because we come into this if block. And again, we go in and make the request over here and print out our console data for email and my name, including my Facebook user ID. So that's all I had for you guys today. If you haven't hit that like button already, make sure you absolutely destroy it down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you enjoy the video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you ran into any issues, don't hesitate to comment below. Uh, I love to interact with all of you. I try to reply to every single comment within uh, at least a uh, minimum and a day, maximum within a few days. So do leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.